And then you've got your option down here to uh, one, uh, uh, one to enter transaction and one to each row of the transaction. Now, one of the benefits of the class tracking is usually you're gonna want them on each row, or that's one of the differences between it and location tracking. So for example, uh, if I use that standard default, I'm gonna say save it, and we go into our invoice or something that we're gonna enter into the system, then you've got your classes field and it's for every line item. So if I had multiple line items in my field, I can assign a class to each of the line items instead of assigning one class to every line item. So, so that's kind of nice. When you then run the reports, you're typically thinking again, income statement reports primarily, although the classes have some options for other reports, you can hit the breakdown here by classes. So now you've added another dimension up top, this time not broken out by customer and project or sub customer, but by class. And so you can see, you can use the classes for some similar things. If you're trying to break out the, the, the concept up top by jobs, for example, then you could assign classes as the jobs and do a similar kind of thing as you could with the sub customers, but you can also use classes you know, uh, uh, for other things or use them both together, which we'll talk more about later. All right, then that was the classes. Then I think the next thing that came up chronologically, I'm pretty sure, I'm not completely sure chronologically, but I'm pretty sure that the next thing was not the location tracking, but rather the projects. So the projects over here, and this is where they deviated and they basically left the desktop version kind of behind because I don't think they have, they, they don't have projects on the desktop version and they added this kind of nice feature in the online version. So if you go into projects, now we can we can add basically a project. Now the projects you can think of as kind of, to some degree are more advanced than sub customers. It's only available if you have QuickBooks Pro Plus or higher. So you need to have, a, if you're in a, a lower version than that, you might be able to do a similar thing with with the uh, with the sub customers and possibly tags. Uh, but the projects allow you to get this whole separate area tracking by project. So you can open up a project here, I can go into the project, and then I can track income and expenses by project, tying invoice and expenses to the project. Projects also have a pretty nice uh, integration with the, the payroll. So you might be able to actually assign payroll, which has been some of the has been a kind of a problematic issue uh, with some of the other methods in a job cost system. And then you've got your own uh, project reports and you can track all the transactions uh, by project. So it's so it's kind of a level up of a job costing kind of thing. And then you can run reports in a similar fashion as we did before. Let's open up the reports again. I can run reports over here and a profit and loss. And I could run them by customers again. And when I run them by customers, the projects will show up again. That's why it's kind of similar to the, to the job cost kind of system, because you're gonna have the project that you can run that way. You can also run a projects report, which is a little bit more summarized uh, of, of a type of report. And then you've got these internal reports over here, which are gonna be run per project. So you can go into your projects over here and uh, go into a particular project and the project reports here and run the reports within the projects. So so then the, so the projects kind of replace to some degree the sub customers. However, you might use them in conjunction because you might, for example, want to add a sub customer and then tie the project to the sub customer. So if I was to say that we want to, uh, I'm sorry, a new project, I'm going to go back on over here and say, I want a new project. Then I have to assign it to a customer, but I could assign it to a sub customer. So I might, for example, have customer number one, but then I have a different billing area for this particular job. Therefore I create a sub customer and then I tie the project to the sub customer. So the sub customer is going to be billed to, to the, uh, I'm sorry, the project's going to be billed to the sub customer, which is basically linked 
to the customer number one. So you can see, so, so that's how you can kind of use those in alignment. So sub customers aren't completely obsolete, even though you're probably going to use jobs, uh, if you have the capacity to, in a lot of ways that you would have used sub customers before to do a job cost type of system. Okay. Then I think they added the location tracking. So the location tracking, as you can see, is in the same area we saw before. I'm going to go to the cog and then the settings on the left. It's in the advanced items down below and the same place where we had the class tracking, we've got the location tracking. So here's the location tracking. Now it's similar to the class tracking, uh, except now it's assigned to every transaction. So it would be similar to the, tr to the class tracking if I chose this option to have one class per transaction. But the cool thing about classes is that you can assign a different class to each line item within the transaction. Whereas the location tracking, you're going to have the whole location uh, assigned to one location. Now the drop down here, you can call it, you can call it location, property, store, business. This line item is what's going to show up when you sort it on the report. So the fact that it says location here doesn't mean that you have to do it by location. You can use the location tracking to break out whatever you want in a similar way as with the class tracking. But the location tracking is actually a little, a little less robust in some ways than the class tracking because the payroll, like you have some more limitations on the payroll we'll dive into later. Uh, and, and again, you have to assign it to the whole transaction but not to each line on line item of the transaction. So to me, for most cases, if you still have the capacity to use class tracking, that's probably the number one option you would use because it has more flexibility. If you're already using class tracking and you want to assign another item in a similar way as class tracking, but have a whole different set of columns that are going to show up on the income statement, then I would go, you know, to the location tracking.